Grab your Ouija boards and watch out for falling elevators because we have episode 3 of Lovecraft Country and it has whatever the hell this is. There is a lot to talk about in this episode including new theories on where the show is headed, what Christina is up to, and what lies beyond that hidden tunnel. But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe so you'll be notified as soon as I come out with a new video. Let's all go to church, somewhere I haven't been since 1955 either. Here we see Letty crying watching Hippolyta in what is assumed is George's funeral, even though there's no casket to be found. There's a strange voiceover here which I originally thought was Letty's mother, however it's pulled directly from Nike's 2017 Be True ad campaign. So go ahead, Letty. Fly. The title of this episode is Holy Ghost, one of three elements of the Holy Trinity, the other two being the Father and the Son, which could easily be substituted for the Mother and the Daughter. Since the other ghosts we see in this episode aren't in any way related to religion, the Holy Ghost the episode title is referring to is the one that haunts Letty more than anything, her mother. We get this title screen which tells us what the episode is about, but the two important things to note here are the three missing people never to be seen again, and the words pine pioneering is dangerous. As we'll find out at the end of the episode, these three missing people are the three white supremacists who broke into Letty's home, but were brutally killed by the home's ghosts. Pioneering here is a reference to Letty staking her claim in an all-white neighborhood. As we'll find out, damn is it dangerous. The events of episode 3 take place three weeks after the funeral of George, who tragically lost his life last episode after being shot by Christina's father, Samuel. Rather than tell Hippolyta and Dee that their father was killed by a group of wizards, Atticus, Letty, and Montrose tell them he was shot by that racist sheriff in episode 1, a lie which causes friction between Atticus and his father. Letty has received a surprise inheritance from her mother, allowing her to purchase this giant haunted mansion in the predominantly white, affluent neighborhood in the north side of Chicago. What Letty doesn't know is that this money isn't from her mother at all. It's from Christina, who wants her in that house. As we'll find out later, this house has a mysterious connection to the events of episodes 1 and 2, one which will have serious implications for episodes to come. Letty shows her sister Ruby around, and if you look closely, you can make out some science equipment and books hinting at the previous homeowner's profession. A disgraced physicist named Hiram Epstein who was fired for performing experiments on humans. Hippolyta is getting ready for church, tearing out pieces of Bram Stoker's Dracula, George's favorite book. Perhaps she's feeling guilty for letting George go on the trip which got him killed, since she offered in episode 1 to go in his place. Or maybe she knows more than she's letting on about what really happened to George. Regardless, she can't let go of him. Even though she rips out pages, she ends up buying a new copy later in the episode. Perhaps the most telling example of her still holding on to George is when she almost pours two cups of coffees at breakfast. One for her, and one for her now non-existent husband. But I don't necessarily think George is gone for good. Later in the episode, the kids use a wee Ouija board which spells out George is dead. One of the kids here is based off Emmett Till, a young boy who was lynched in Mississippi in 1955 after being accused of offending a white woman in a grocery store. That explains why the ghost says he won't have a fun time on his trip. But back to this George thing. How would the ghost in the house know George is dead unless he's somewhere existing in the afterlife or if it's George himself doing this? This would also fit in with Dracula, a creature that was simultaneously living while dead. So so too will George become this type of living but also dead entity. It's also important to note that Hippolyta buys this new copy of Dracula after she visits this mysterious room in the mansion, a room which has an orrery or mechanical model of a solar system. Well, it can't be our solar system since there are more than eight planets here. There also happens to be a telescope in the background, just like there's one in George and Hippolyta's bedroom. I can't help but think that someone may have paid Hippolyta a visit in this room, hence her buying a new copy copy of the book. Someone definitely wanted her in there as the door opens on its own. Montrose has gone back to the drink, and notice this quick shot of the Count of Monte Cristo, a story about a man escaping captivity, just like he did last episode. There's also a picture of his wife on the right, the same woman who cozied up to George in his hallucination. Letty moves into the house, and fun easter egg, the name of the dog here, Baldwin, is named after James Baldwin, whose speech on the American Dream was featured in
in episode one. There's some unresolved tension here between Letty and Atticus. He's planning to move to Florida and put everything that happened in Artem behind him. That is until a group of white supremacists give them the shittiest welcome to the neighborhood. Ruby equates this to Trumbull Park, a real historical event that happened in Chicago in 1953 when a black family moved into a predominantly white public housing project. Their home was pelted with rocks and fireworks and the police did nothing to stop it. Letty discovers a secret basement beneath the boiler room. We'll later find out this is where that scientist Epstein conducted his experiments. That's why we'll see ghosts like Babyhead over here whose head transplant was one of Epstein's evil experiments. Hippolyta talks about coping with the loss of George and living with Atticus. Letty makes a comment asking Hippolyta if Atticus reminds her of George, another slight hint that Atticus is George's son. If you haven't heard my theory on that, check out my episode 2 breakdown video. What follows next is a great example of how the music in this episode lines up perfectly with the action on screen. Louis Jordan's Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby plays while Atticus jealously looks on as Letty dances with another man. I Don't Hurt Anymore plays after Letty and Atticus bang, and finally Dorinda Clark Cole's Take It Back plays as Letty smashes the cars outside her home. This results in Letty taken in by the police where she finds out that the bodies of eight black men and women were found in her home a few years back, a home built by Horatio Winthrop, one of the founding members of the Sons of Adam. His name can even be found on the painting Samuel showed off in episode two. Horatio didn't like that Titus Braithwaite was the only one who could decipher the book of names, so he decided to steal some of the pages and make his own cipher, ultimately locking up these pages in a booby-trapped vault. You know that tunnel we see at the end of the episode with dead bodies, some which look really old in it? My guess is that leads to this vault and those pages, hence why Christina paid off the realtor and gave Letty money in her mother's name to get access to it. Christina seems to be the ultimate puppet master here, pretty much confirming my thoughts that she was responsible for her father's death. She knew he had invulnerability, but he'd have to take off that spell during the ritual, and she also gave Atticus that ring, which caused her father to turn to stone. Letty accidentally blurts out that she got the money for this house from her mother's inheritance, something Ruby, her sister, didn't know anything about. Ruby is pissed, and rightly so. Ruby has been bailing Letty out of jail for years and sending her money. Why would their mother give Letty money when Letty wasn't the best daughter? Heck, Letty didn't even come to the funeral. And to top it off, Letty was being selfish and kept the money to herself, a trait she says Letty inherited from their mother. Letty does more research on the house, finding out that a crooked cop was supplying Epstein with black folks to conduct experiments on. She finds newspaper articles of the missing men and women and ominous photos of their souls yearning to break free, their restless souls trapped in her house with their killer. She tells this to Atticus while also mentioning that their little sexcapade was her first time. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I found this whole thing a bit odd. I don't think they'd make Letty a virgin and show the blood unless there's some significance for later episodes. For example, we know how Atticus comes from Titus Braithwaite's bloodline. If he gets Letty pregnant, he could be passing on that bloodline, which could have significant ramifications for the story. Letty and Atticus bring a witch doctor to help free the spirits trapped within the house. It's important to note here that Letty's mother knew this voodoo practitioner, so we might see a link between Letty's ancestry and magic. They call upon Mama Oya, the spirit of death and rebirth, who awakens the restless spirits who proceed to kill the invading white supremacists. Letty calls upon the spirits using their real names to join hands and banish Epstein, allowing the spirits to transform back to their normal selves and pass on to the next life. With the spirits taken care of, Letty is interviewed by a reporter who remarks on how selfless she is for creating a home for those needing affordable housing. Quite the contrast to what Ruby thinks of her. The reporter asks if she knows anything about the three missing white guys who now sit murdered in a secret level beneath the home. She says no. Now, I'm not sure if she's telling the truth here or not. Letty was taking care of the spirits while they were killed, so she either found the bodies and moved them after, or someone else did. We just don't know yet. Finally, we have Atticus's confrontation with Christina. He wants her to stay away from his family, even points a gun at her. A particular note here is Christina's revelation that those who study the Book of Names are lucky if they can even manage one spell. In episode one, we saw this car flip, and in episode two, a force field crash a car. This seems to be Christina's power, but whether or not she has more is yet to be seen. She ends up giving him a business card, asking him to call her if he wants to learn more about their family legacy. If I were Atticus, I'd hold on to that. That's it for today's video, everyone. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment with your thoughts and theories on the episode below. For more bad takes, follow me 
on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. And until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.